My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliest of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me in his holy name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in his thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and the live is a sign of eternity. God with us right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our heart for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into the presence, God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. It is a peace that knows the company is coming. Okay. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Hi friends, welcome to week four of Advent. It's Christmas week already. I'm so excited and, and I'm looking forward to this week, this week of love. And one of the things that is so important to, to me and my family is the ability to get together where we can hug each other and greet each other, tell stories to each other, and just show each other how much we love each other. And this year is going to be a little bit different because we're not going to get together. We're not going to be able to, to hug each other and see each other. And I know there are other families that are also going to be separate this year. And we have families that have maybe somebody with some mental health issues which are heightened during this COVID time. Um, we have other families that have certain challenges when they get together. But as I think about that, and I think, well, so why do we still continue to get together and what's so important about getting together? And it's the love that we have for each other. But we've got love for each other 24-7, 365 days out of the year, whether we're together or not. And so it may be a distance love that we have this year for Christmas. We're not going to be able to physically show our love to each other. Um, but we know that we still have love amongst us, and that's, that's so important. But then I got to thinking that that ability to have that physical love, to show our physical love, it extends not just when we're together, but when we're apart. Just as God loves us, when we can't touch and feel and see God, but we know he is there 24-7. And it's the love that God has brought to us through his son, Jesus Christ, 
that has been such the blessing to us. And as we go through this week, we need to remember that love that God gave to us and the love that is ours because of Jesus Christ. So our activity, our mission this week, and really even beyond this week as we go into 2021, is to show that love to others and give them the love that you know is yours through Christ Jesus. One of the things I was looking at uh, as I was trying to think about how to share with you the, the, the message of love tonight, as I went back to the Bible and I read the love chapter, reread the love chapter, and if you're like me, sometimes you hear but you don't listen. I kind of feel that's what happened to me when I reread the love chapter. Most of the times when I hear the love chapter, I'm at a wedding and it's a couple getting ready to commit to each other into a lifelong marriage. But when I reread the love chapter and I thought about God's love for us and the family's love that, that envelops me, and I pray to you as well, when I reread the love chapter, it made it a much broader chapter, a lot broader message than what I had heard before. So let me re re read to you 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8, the love chapter, and think about it in the terms of God's love for us and your love within your family. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This week, let's share the love of Christ with others. Jesus Christ is the reason that we have hope, peace, joy. and love. Merry Christmas.